Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, today we have got uh, Luke chapter 15, verses, what is this, 11 through 32. Yes, 11 through 32. Uh, so a little, bit, a little bit longer here. We've got the parable of the prodigal son. Very well-known uh, parable and uh, probably one that you, you know most of the contours of already. So let's just jump right in. Uh, Luke 15, verse, uh, beginning with verse 11. And he said there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. And he who was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and uh, no one gave him anything to eat. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he, is, but he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I never, dis, I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat, that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are, with, you are always with me, and all, that I'm, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. All right, so obviously this fits in really well with the previous parables in this section about um, repentance and, and the joy that, that God um, uh experiences and all of heaven experiences when one sinner repents that uh, this is the you know finding that lost sheep finding that lost coin and now the the son who was lost um and is is now brought back into the family there's there's much rejoicing so we have um you know first we have the 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 younger son who wants his share of the inheritance so you know usually you don't get the inheritance until after the parent dies well this is how how Highly, this son seems to care about his his father. Is that he he doesn't want to wait till his father dies. He just wants to get his money and go. He's like he's he's done. Wants to go do his own thing. So the father does it. Gives him his money. Guy goes off and he 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 wastes all of his money. He, he uh, uses it in reckless living, and things get so bad for him that um you know he's has to hire himself out to feed pigs, and of course pigs were unclean animals and. Um, you know, they, they weren't supposed to be around these unclean things. And, and this is, this is how bad it is. He has uh, defiled himself, um, with, with prostitutes and, and all this reckless living. And now just to get by, he has to defile himself further. So things are pretty bad for him. So he figures I'll go back. You know, if I, if I work as a servant, at least things will be better for me than, than they are now. So he rehearses his speech, goes back to, to his father 
And the, the big deal is that his father sees him and is just filled with compassion, runs out to him, grabs him, hugs him, and is just so happy to have him back. You know, gets a, the finest robe, puts a ring on his finger, and throws a huge party. Um, so the, you know, the, the real center of this parable is, is not the son, it's the father. Um, and that's, you know, we, we should always be reading scripture as, as if it were revealing God to us, because that's kind of what it does. Um, so rather than focusing on the prodigal solely, uh, we, we focus on the father, the, the kind of uh, reckless, loving father who, um, you know, gives greatly of himself, you know, gives his son half of what he, what he has, um, gives him the inheritance in advance, um, receives him back with open arms, does not ask about what has happened, does not want an accounting of what was done. He just receives him back and brings him back into the fold. So certainly the, the outrageous love of the father. But there's also the second son, the older son. And, and too often we kind of leave that portion to the side. And, um, you know, the older son is, is, feels indignant because it's like, well, he, he, never, he never sinned like this, his, his useless brother. Um, in fact, he doesn't even regard him a brother anymore. He says, this son of yours. Um, so how, how disgusted he is with his brother and how much he doesn't want, even want to be in the same family with him. Um, but he's upset because his father never lavished this kind of love and praise on him. Um, but the father points out, like, look, you're, you're always with me and everything I have is yours. You're, you're, you are not lesser. You are not any different. You are not lesser than him because I'm, I'm celebrating here. I'm just celebrating because he was lost and now he's found. He was dead and now he's alive. So in the, in the background of all this is, is the Pharisees and, and the sinners. You know, Pharisees, scribes, tax collectors, and sinners. And so, um, you know, Jesus is, is trying to explain, like, you know, when, when these tax collectors and sinners repent, the, God the Father goes running after them, grabs them, hugs them dresses them up in the finest stuff and throws a party. Okay. The Pharisees and scribes are the older sons who grumble about that. Like, Oh, he eats with tax collectors and sinners. Can you believe this? He treats them like they're people. Oh, imagine that. Um, so certainly this is kind of a, a dig at them and to point out that, Hey, you know, God cherishes these tax collectors and sinners. He absolutely adores them when they repent and, and come and, and he is able to re restore them into, into the family that that's his, he's so happy when that happens. Um, and, and what I think gets missed in this, which is a nice thing that we don't, I don't think is, is played up often enough is that too, too often when we've got, you know, we've got the Pharisees over here, we've got tax collectors and sinners. So you've got these two groups. Pharisees are always the bad guys. You know, they're always the ones who are grumbling. They're the ones who be tossed out and weeping of gnashing teeth and all that good stuff. Um, and the tax collectors and sinners are the ones who repent, the ones who God rejoices over. This parable points out that, you know, they're both children of God. They're both children of the Father. Um, you know, Jesus didn't just come for tax collectors and sinners. He came for scribes and Pharisees and tax collectors and sinners. He came for everybody. And so this is kind of a, a nice reminder and, and really um, one of the more charitable, <laughs> um, loving things that, that Jesus shares with the Pharisees is pointing out to them, like, you know what? You are the ones who are separating yourself off from the family. You are the ones saying, that son of yours, not that brother of mine. You are the ones placing yourselves further and further out from God's grace and his love. But Jesus says through this parable, but God the Father says, you're still my son. You, you, you have everything, half of all I have is, is yours. You know, I always have you with me. You are still, you know, I still regard you as, as my child. Um, and so the good news there is that, you know, whichever way you sin, whether you're more of a tax collector or a sin or a prostitute, sinner, whatever, or if you're more of a scribe or a Pharisee, you know, you're, you're both. God's children. You are both um, ones that he, he loves and desires to be with him. Um, the danger, though, is for the younger son that, that he wouldn't repent. So the danger for us is that we don't repent of our sin in, in turn. The danger on the other side is that we become so legalistic and so um, focused on, how, on the sins of others and how we are better and, and deserve better treatment that we end up putting ourselves further and further away from God and, and, and thus, you know, even to the point where we might be outside of his kingdom. Um, so there's, there's a lot of um, 
warning for us in this, encouragement for us. Uh, but ultimately, while it does tell us quite a bit about ourselves um, and you know which side of that sin spectrum we we are identifying with at, at any given point in time, the real heart of the story is certainly the the, the loving father. The, the reckless love of the father who um, who just doesn't regard anything so as long as it means that he can he can receive his children back that that, that in repentance they they come back that they are restored they're made new um, that they are part of this joyful celebration of um, of the family so um, so yeah that's uh, definitely focus on the father there, but don't don't just focus on the prodigal. You know, look at the older brother too, and recognize that they are both brothers. They are both sons. They are both part of the family. And so, what Jesus is doing there is trying to show how both can be together, and 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 in God's love and mercy, um, it, we we would do well to recognize that <laughs> more often. So. There you go. Parable of the prodigal son. Terrible title. Great parable. <laughs> terrible because it should be the parable of the loving father. Okay. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly father, through Jesus Christ, your dear son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Wednesday. Hope you have a wonderful day today, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.